All right, guys, welcome to Flav Oriana's MMA show. I'm your host, Flav Oriana, brought to you by Four Corner Sports. All right, guys, so we ended up concluding USC Vegas 25. Yes, the 25th time the USC has held an, a fight night at the Apex Center, and it was headlined by Dominic Reyes versus Yuri Prohashka. Dominic Reyes, former uh, light heavyweight title contender, all right, fought for the belt, fought against John Jones. Many people, uh, this will go down to in the debate. Did John Jones win the fight or did Reyes win the fight? All right. In my opinion, I it was a really close fight, but I felt like John Jones did enough in the championship rounds where he was going to be able to get the victory. But other people are going to say, hey, Dominic Reyes dominated those first three rounds and you have to give it to him. But, you know, that's what he's famous for. Um, and then obviously, he, you know, Reyes had fought recently. For the vacant light heavyweight title, and Jan Bohovic ended up winning. Later, Jan Bohovic would be able to defend that belt against Israel Adesanya, which in, he was successful handing Israel Adesanya his very first loss in, um, in mixed martial arts. So now we fast forward May May first, two thousand twenty one, Dominic Reyes versus Yuri Prohashka in the main event. Yuri Prohashka made his uh, debut on Fight Island, uh, UFC two two fifty one. That was a card where Masvidal and Usman fought, but Yuri Prohashka ended up fighting in the prelims against former um, UFC light light heavyweight uh, title contender um, Volkan um, Udesmir. Um, I can't pronounce his name. Just know Volkan, yeah, Volkan Udesmir or Udesmir. However you want to pronounce it, I I just I'm always bad at pronouncing names. But anyways, so. Um, that happened, and that was the main event. We also had Cub Swanson fighting a uh, top prospect, uh, Giga Chikatse. Um, then you also had Ian Kunsalaba versus J- Dustin Jacoby, Sean Strickland versus uh, Crystal Jaco, and then we also had um, Marab Dishvalavili uh, versus Cody Steeman. Without further ado, I'm gonna get ahead with the main event. So, the main event we had. Like I said, uh, Dominic Reyes versus Yuri Prohashka. And wow, what a banger of a fight. Honestly, this is the type of fight that should have been on the a- ABC card over Marvin Vittori versus uh, Kevin Holland. I know this fight was supposed to happen actually in February. I believe right after the uh, Kamaru Usman Gilbert Burns fight. But that ended up getting pushed back due to the fact that um, Dominic Reyes got hurt during camp. And Dominic Reyes wanted to have a full camp being ready for him to fight Yuri Prohashka. And just from the start, from round one, as soon as the bell rang, it was just, it was just, it was like, let's go. Let's go. Um, we're going to get it on. Uh, Prohashka applying so much pressure, all right? When I saw Prohashka fighting, honestly, it reminded me of Tony Ferguson, like, mixed in with uh, Justin Gaethje type of approach uh, the reason why i say a tony ferguson like approach is because his hands are low pressuring you walking you down like the boogeyman absorbing punches but then just giving it to you applying all the damage in the world and just Gaethje with his onslaught his power his his recklessness and him wanting just to not trying to knock your head off so that's a very scary combination for yuri Prohashka. so he was able to you know use that pressure and very and i want to say um, frustrate and led to the demise of Dominic Reyes in this fight because Dominic Reyes only lasted two rounds before him getting knocked out cold. All right, it was a very scary knockout, knocked out cold by a Prohashka uh, spinning elbow. the f- The first two things that I actually thought about was this: it was one about boxing, and then it was one about MMA. The part about MMA is that wow, Prohashka, you know, with that spinning elbow, reminded me of John Jones back in his his early days. When he would use that spinning elbows to catch you when you're not even you know paying attention, and then went into boxing, what reminded me of that moment is when Prohashka ended up doing that spinning elbow. Well, he first ended up throwing, I want to say like a 12-6 elbow, hitting him, hitting Reyes right on, on the top of the noggin. Right once Reyes thought the onslaught was over, he dropped his hands. Prohashka spins around with the opposite elbow and then catches him right dead straight on the cheekbone dropping him down to the floor and the way that reyes landed was very scary all right it was very scary because 
Reyes landed on his neck, and, and that's not something that you want to see. Um, so what made me think about boxing? Well, if you guys ever saw Juan Manuel Marquez fighting uh, Manny Pacquiao, the last time they had fought, Pacquiao ended up landing face first into the canvas, similar to how Dominic Reyes landed, and it was so scary. Um, I know at that time Pacquiao I need need an ambient to wake up, you know, because he was out cold, he was asleep, and Reyes was in the similar fashion the way that he ended up getting knocked out. Um, very scary stuff. So what's next for these two individuals? Now that Yuri Prohashka dominated the fight in his debut against uh, Volkan Odesmir. Oldesmere, and then now you ended up having another dominant performance against a top three light heavyweight in the world in Dominic Reyes. Well, Dana White had announced it, and he has said that the winner of this fight is going to get next for the title shot. And Yuri Prohashka, ladies and gentlemen, he is most he is going to be next. But the question is, does he want to wait? Because unfortunately, the fight between Jan Bohovic and Glover Teixeira is not happening anytime soon. It is happening in September. All right, we are still we are just entering spring. All right, that is going to be happening in the fall. It's going to be happening after Labor Day. So the real question is, is Yuri Prohashka willing to wait on the shelf, all right, till most likely the end of the year? In my opinion, if you ask me, no. I certainly do believe that Prohashka is most likely going to end up fighting at least one more time before he gets the belt, just so he can stay active. And the person that comes into mind, you know, when it comes to him fighting, I know the UFC might might not want to do it, but they might understand it, is Prohashka might want to fight Alexander Rakic. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Rakic looked dominant in his performance against Thiago Santos. He looked dominant in his performance against Anthony Smith. And if it wasn't for Yuri Prohashka's, you know, spinning elbow, right, most likely, you know, Rakic would be next, all right, barring if this fight that he had against Reyes um, would have gone down to like a decision or if it would have been like a snoozer, Rakic would have been next for a title shot. But since, you know, Prohashka got the spinning elbow, he got the highlight real knockout, you know, what's it called? Prohashka is next, but I have a strong feeling that Prohashka is not going to sit on the shelf. He's most likely going to fight Alexander Rakic. That's, that fight's going to be wild. In the perfect world, if I'm the UFC, I'm putting that fight on the same card as... Jan Bohovic versus Glover Teixeira. You put that on the same card, whether it's the, the first fight on, on the card, the third fight on the card, or the co-main event, you put that, that fight on the main card so people can see because Yuri Pahashka has the ability of becoming a star with his highlight reel knockouts, all right? This is something that we haven't seen in the light heavyweight division in quite some time, all right? And since John Jones left, since Daniel Cormier left, all right, Anthony Rumble Johnson left, there hasn't been that big of of uh, like superstar names in the light heavyweight division. Jan Bohovic, if he keeps on winning and he keeps on defending his belt, he'll become a huge household name. He ended up defeating one of the biggest names in the UFC in Israel Adesanya. Next, he has to defend his title against Glover Teixeira. I'm gonna give him the, the nod on that fight, but Yuri Pahashka looks like he looks like the real deal, knocking out Dominic Reyes. John Jones could have do it. Jan Bohovic ended up knocking him, him out, but not in that fashion. But Yuri Pahashka ended up doing it. That says a lot about Prashka. I'm very excited for this prospect. I, well, you can't even really call him a prospect because this guy was fighting and rising and knocking people's heads off. But I'm very excited to see the future of Prashka and what he's able to do in his next title in, in his next fight, whether it's against Alexander Rakic or it's against um, in the title fight between the winner of Teixeira versus uh, uh, Jan Bohovic. Now, moving on next, we have the co-main event: Giga Chikatse versus Cub Swanson. Now, that fight ended, only ended up lasting a little bit over a minute because Cub Swanson absorbed a nasty, nasty liver shot uh, by Giga Chikante with the Giga kick, that he calls it. It was, a, it was a clean kick right into the liver. His toes ended up digging deep inside there. Um, after, the kick was, um, after he absorbed that kick, within like a second or two later, he felt it all, dropped down to the floor. Giga Chikante ended up you know, pouncing on the moment and started grounding and pounding. Until so the referee ended up stopping the fight and pulling Giga Chikate off. All right. Impressive win on a very, you know, sturdy opponent in Cub Swanson. Cub Swanson is not the type of person to just get dropped like that. But, you know, props to you, Giga Chikate. He had a great 2020. Coming into 2021 with a nice victory. Now he ended up calling out Calvin Cater and Max Holloway. Most likely not, not going to get that fight. What I do want to see is... 
if we want to match make for this guy, well, Jeremy Siemens, you know, was supposed to fight last week against Jakar Close, all right? Jakar Close ended up getting a whiplash, ended up getting a headache. Um, I think he ended up having like like a um, like a neck problem because of that um, that push. I would like to see Jeremy Stevens versus Giga Jakante. Uh, Jeremy Stevens has been, you know, quote unquote, like the gatekeeper of the top ten in featherweight. If that would be a very violent fight, I would look forward to seeing that. That's something that I would want to see on a either on a fight uh, on a fight night main event or somewhere on a pay per view card, just opening up a card, opening up the main event. I mean, the main card. But that would be a very violent fight, and that's something that I would look forward to seeing. You know, can Giga Chikase handle all the pure violence that Jeremy Stevens has to, pro- has to offer to him? If it's not Jeremy Stevens, I know the UFC mo- most likely won't want to do it, but I would love to see Giga Chikase versus Bryce Mitchell. You know, Doug Nasty, Bryce Mitchell versus uh, Giga Chikase. How will Giga Chikase do against a wrestler and a grappler like Bryce Mitchell? We won't. We will need to find out because I don't think we've seen Giga Chikase on his back. Everything has been stand up. Everything has been fighting within distance, fighting within range, and dominating the, the striking department. All right. Let's see how he can do with somebody who's gonna pressure him, throw him onto the floor, put him in, in different position, put him in full mount, put him in half guard. All right. You know, grind out you know rounds like that. That'll be very interesting to see. Will the UFC do it? Most likely not. That might be a fight for a later date. But I do see the UFC most likely putting Giga Chikante against Jeremy Stevens. Now going into the third fight, um, Ian Kuntalaba versus Dustin Jacoby. Wow. If you guys saw the face-off, Dustin Jacoby was very ticked off against Ian Kuntalaba. I think Ian Kuntalaba, you know, needs to stop doing these type of things. But um, Kuntalaba dominated that first round. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, this guy was a takedown machine, utilizing takedown after takedown after takedown, dominating the ground and pound, dominating the the wrestling department, um, putting Jacoby against the cage. All right, it was an easy 10-8 round. After that, it was very questionable on um, on Jacoby, you know, whether he had won the second second round. I gave it to Jacoby. He was dominating. He uh, Well, not dominating. He, he was uh, winning in the striking department. He was he was evading the takedowns, you know, u- utilizing his punches and stuff like that. Same thing with the third round. It ended up resulting into a tie, a split draw, which I was okay with at first. I wasn't okay with at first, but when I had to rewatch the fight, I was okay with it. It was one of those fights where I thought it would have been fight of the night, but that was Yuri Prohashka versus uh, Dominic Reyes. Um, what's next for these two individuals? I mean, you know, Jacoby's you know stock doesn't rise, neither it falls, and Kuntzalaba's stock doesn't rise and it doesn't fall. One thing I would like to see for Kuntzalaba is just please stop doing all these antics during the face-offs. You know, somebody's going to get end up getting hurt or getting fined or suspended. It's not worth it. I do want to see Kuntzalaba fight, you know, Ryan Spann. If he's able to fight Ryan Spann, that's something that I'll be heavily, heavily very interested in upon. Because he lost against um, Magomed Ankolaev, fighting as Ryan Spann. Not that far in the rankings from Kuntzalaba. Would we'll love to see that fight. As for Dustin Jacoby, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know who I can match him up with. I thought if he would have gotten a, a big time uh, victory over Kuntzalaba... It could have definitely excelled him, you know, into the rankings. But, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with Jacoby. Moving on next, I love this fight because Sean Strickland versus Crystal Jocko was amazing. Because have we have we seen Sean Strickland get, flirt, you know, like frustrated in his uh, three-fight win streak? Because he ended up dominating that fight against uh, Jocko, utilizing the jab, walking him down, pressuring him, guys. Sean Strickland looked great. He looked fantastic. All right. Um, no scratches whatsoever. You know, it was frustrating Jocko. Jocko was using so much energy, um, being back down, trying to, you know, was was trying to make Sean Strickland bite on feints, moving left and right. And Strickland was just like unfazed by any of those antics that Jocko was presenting towards him last night. Jo- uh, Jocko was just eating jab after jab after jab, had a bloody nose. His eye was starting to get a little bit puffy after absorbing all the, the right jabs that, uh, I'm sorry, the left jabs that Sean Strickland ended up giving towards him. Phenomenal fight by Strickland. He was using, he was utilizing the kicks to the body, to switching it to the legs, to opening him up with a left jab right down, uh, straight down to the face. 
So, um, phenomenal work by Sean Strickland. The only thing I would have loved to see, it was for him to move left and right, left and right. Use the jab to utilize the right hook to opening up your punches, all right? Because honestly, I think that Sean Strickland could have ended that fight back in the second round. I think the fight dragged on a little bit, but I don't know if Strickland, you know, really cared to go for a knockout. But either way, he got the victory. He, he did his job. He ended up walking down uh, Jocko all night for those 15 minutes. And Jocko was, Jocko was just eating everything that uh, Strickland was giving towards him. At one point, Strickland had as high as a 51% striking, um, what's it called, percentage on the strikes that he ended up throwing, which is crazy. More than half your punches are landing, and they're landing flush. Phenomenal stuff. So what happens with Sean Strickland? Well, I think he still sticks at 15 in the rankings, all right? Who he should fight next? I mean, kind of would like to see him fight Jockery. That would be a very interesting fight. I know Jockery has a fight coming up soon. I think it's it's next week. If Jockery wins, I do want to see Strickland fight Jockery. Jockery is a legend. I would like to see Strickland get like a heavy push. If he gets a heavy push, I mean, come on, guys. That's somebody that we, we can all kind of root for. Plus, he wasn't talking smack in this fight, but I'm pretty sure he'll be talking smack in his, in his next fight. And then lastly, we have Marab Dishvalavili versus Cody Stamen. I had uh, Marab winning the fight. You know, I predicted that he was going to win the fight. I thought he was going to win the fight fairly and square. But Cody Stamen looked fantastic. All right, his cardio looked up to par. You know, he didn't look fatigued out. The only problem is, is that Marab is a different animal, and he's one of the, be the best bantamweights that's out there that's not highly ranked. I think Marab, you know, as he's going to be climbing up the ladder in the bantamweight division, Dominating in all th well, I got him. I had him winning all three rounds because Cody Stamen just didn't have much answers from Marab. I just think that Marab is gonna end up fighting. He should honestly fight Pedro Munoz. Oh, not Pedro Munoz. Um, not Pe the guy that he ended up fighting Pedro Munoz. Um, Jimmy Rivera. He should fight Jimmy Rivera. That'd be a phenomenal fight. Marab striking versus uh, Jimmy striking. That'd be great. And plus, it those I think. Marab has the advantage in the wrestling department over Jimmy Rivera, which is going to open up so many avenues for Marab in a fight like that. Plus, Jimmy Rivera has a little bit of a name. If you get past him, you get back. You could get into the top ten, and then from there on, you could fight your, the likes of, you know, Rafael Asuncao's. You could fight your uh, Pedro Munoz. You could fight your Cody Garbrandt's, Dominic Cruz's. So I think if he could fight Jimmy Rivera, it's going to open up so many more avenues. Possibly a Marlon Chito Vera, but Marlon Chito Vera, I don't think he will take the fight against uh, Marab. Not at this point. So that's and that's the conclusion of everything that happened at UFC Vegas 25. Next week, I don't even know who's going to be the main event. There's, there's talks about Michelle Waterson versus Marina Rodriguez. That has not been official yet. TJ Dillashaw versus uh, Corey Sanhagen. It is out because of a, a cut underneath the eye of uh, TJ Dillashaw. That fight is scheduled to be uh, rebooked at a later date. Hopefully, it gets booked on the July 10th card with Conor McGregor headlining versus the, uh, what's it called, uh, Dustin uh, Poirier. That'll be a phenomenal card. You guys can squeeze that in there. But yeah, that covers everything on UFC, UFC Vegas 25, the recap. Until then, I'm your host, Flavio Rihanna, and thank you for tuning in on, on this program of Flavio Rihanna's MMA show. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time, guys. Peace, guys.